been frequently told that I was born 200 years too late. Apparently, I missed this great age of exploration. Now, I disagree, but with the world's tallest peaks climbed, the depths of our ocean reached, and the poles mapped, it is a seemingly valid question. What is left to explore? Believe it or not, even in 2017, we know far less about our world than you might think. We know more about Mars than what lies beneath our own oceans. We recently discovered an entirely undocumented rainforest in Mozambique, and indigenous cultures are disappearing before their knowledge is shared. Exploration is no longer about planting your nation's flag in an uncharted territory or being the first to summit the world's tallest mountains. While these accomplishments are iconic, they're part of a larger fabric of exploration. Today, exploration is about increasing our knowledge and understanding of the world we live in, which for me often means living with indigenous communities and experiencing alternative ways of interacting with the Earth. In my time with these remote communities, I've found we all face the same challenges. Food, water, shelter, love. Yet, given these common challenges, the range of cultural adaptation is extraordinary. Let me give you a little bit of background. As a young girl, I devoured articles in National Geographic about deforestation and tribes disappearing at alarming rates. And I remember feeling this immense sense of urgency, along with the realization that I could be a part of one of the last generations to live in a world where such remote places even exist. I knew pretty early on that if I wanted to see these remote places before they disappeared, I was going to have to act fast. So when the opportunity arose to explore a potential anthropological anomaly, female chiefs in the Pacific Islands of Vanuatu, I was ecstatic. <laughs> because for over 100 years, literature declared that there were no female chiefs in Vanuatu. But in 2016, a team and I discovered that there were, in fact, female chiefs in Vanuatu. Now, for me, the discovery of female chiefs demonstrated that the golden age of exploration wasn't over. Exploration is now more important than ever because there is a time pressure that did not exist for explorers 200 years ago. As a result of globalization and climate change, practices fundamental to indigenous cultures, such as sand drawing and water music, are disappearing at alarming rates. And with every single one of these worldviews that fades, we're left with a diminished capacity to the common challenges that face us all. The people of Vanuatu are famous for their tradition of sand drawing. Now, sand drawing developed as this method of communication between tribes in a, a country of over 115 different language groups. Sand drawings are made in the ground when the drawler uses one finger to trace this continuous line, which ends up creating a, a beautiful design. But these designs are more than art. They transmit rituals, mythology, everyday songs and events. But now they can also be used like a text message or a note. Say you went to visit your neighbor and they weren't home. You could crank out a little sand drawing by their front hut entry to say, hey, Bob, stop by to say hi. Hope all's well with you and the family. <laughs> but globalization is now affecting even these most remo remote corners of the Earth. Continually expanding telephone networks in Vanuatu have meant that most youngsters are more interested in learning to text in the national language of Bishlama than learning the sand drawings in their island language. Seems we aren't the only ones concerned about our youngsters becoming glued to technology. But globalization is not the only factor exerting a time pressure on modern exploration. Climate change poses a threat to our global diversity of culture. In the village of Narovarovo, access to clean drinking water used to be found in a spring, a mere five minute walk from the village. Women would go to the spring to collect drinking water and engage in the practice of water music a mesmerizing tradition that involves standing waist deep in the water and, and rhythmically slapping the water's surface to create this aquatic symphony. Now, that spring I mentioned, that was a five-minute walk from the village, 
It's since dried up after years of unprecedented drought. Now the women must walk 30 minutes each way to collect drinking water. It's a strenuous walk deep in the jungle, and by the time they get to the new natural spring, they're tired and tight on time, which has resulted in a decline in the amount of water music being practiced. And while it may not seem like a big deal to you and me that these women on a tiny island are practicing water music less, it is a threat to our ethnosphere and cultural survival. Besides, how boring would it be if we were all one homogeneous culture glued to our smartphones? Unfortunately, these cultural effects of climate change are not limited to this tiny cluster of islands. It's a worldwide phenomenon that I've observed with San Bushman in Namibia, off the coast of Panama with the Kuna, and when not being chased by crocodiles, on the banks of the Olahai River in Madagascar. So in my time exploring, I, I often find myself alone, alone in places with concerning histories of cannibalism, violence against women, and most tropical neglected diseases found under the sun. It can be both exhilarating and cosmically terrifying. But if we stay in the comforts of our own community, within these confines of our own ideologies, we stand to lose so much. So nerves be damned, I persist. And after all, I mean, isn't that part of what exploration is all about? The act of exploring and discovering something about the unknown, even if it means being exposed to risk? My time exploring has encouraged me to embrace responsible risk-taking and discover belief systems profoundly different from my own. While some of these belief systems may seem a little peculiar, it's important that we sort of set our culture aside to listen and learn from these unique voices before they disappear. One practice that I initially found a little peculiar was a traditional banking system. Vanuatu is heavily reliant on farming, which is why many communities maintain a barter economy, supplemented with traditional money, such as strings of seashells, red mats, and pig tusks. Much like here in Australia, where you might go to the bank to deposit a check, in certain communities in Vanuatu, you would go to the bank to deposit your string of seashells or your pig tusk, such as the one I am wearing. Now, this practice may seem a little outdated, or even archaic in our billion-dollar cash economy, but is it? Let's consider what happened in the global financial crisis in Greece. Essentially, a lack of trust in banks led people to try and withdraw their money only to find that their money wasn't there. Perhaps our banks can learn a thing or two from this not-so-archaic system. We can also learn a lot about effective stewardship policy. On Maiwo Island, elders noticed a decline in their island's fish catch. So, in an effort to ensure future access to the island's main protein source, elders placed an unequivocal temporary ban on fishing, with punishments for non-compliers as severe and ironic as being fed to the sharks. <laughs> so this, all of these indigenous knowledge and wisdom brought to light through exploration can challenge our Western wisdom limitations and contribute to our collective well-being. So yes, gone are the days where explorers are rewriting terra incognita. But that does not mean that exploration is in conflict with modernity. Today, exploration is about increasing our knowledge and understanding of the world we live in. While the opportunities for modern exploration are endless, there is a time pressure. Indigenous voices are increasingly being silenced amid a whirlwind of conflict and globalization and with every one of these worldviews that fades, every culture that disappears, no matter how seemingly remote or extraneous, so too does our repertoire of wisdom to the common challenges that face us all. The cure for cancer could be found in some little-known plant endangered by deforestation. Who knows what secrets lie in our ocean depths? And don't even get me started on space. The next great age of exploration is just beginning, and I hope you all will join me. Thank you.